What's up, all you dreamers out there? Oh, we are here for another edition of Talk About It Tuesdays. I need to go back and see what, how many episodes we've done so I can start naming the episodes and numbering them so they're easier to find. We're starting to get a lot of good videos here, got a lot of good content. Oh, lots of folks that are looking for content, and I always direct them to the um, featured section of our site that has all of these Talk About It Tuesdays with you fine, lovely folks. What's up, Michael? What's up, Joe? What's up, Jen? What's up, Chris? Hi, wife. Hi, wifey. Hi, Vanna wife. She's just in the other room watching me. <laughs> uh, this week, we're going to be talking about germination, guys. We're going to be talking about all things germination. I'm going to give you guys a little video tutorial, a live little video tutorial here on how to how I do my germination. And that's probably one of the most common things I get as a breeder is my beans won't pop or it's been five days. There is a very certain set of variables um, that go into the perfect and optimal environment for germinating seeds. Okay, Now, I get this a lot of times. Uh, they'll have my beans or somebody else's beans or whatever the case, and they'll try to germinate them all the time. Some of them will come up fine, some of them won't. Most of the time, what I find is that is due that inconsistencies in your temperature can be a very big cause of slow germination and non-germination. All right, anything below seventy-eight degrees is going to be give you start give you trouble, man. Uh, 78 to 83 degrees, that's going to be the prime spot, and keeping it held in that temperature range is going to be key. So, before we get all too, too started and too serious in here, who wants to see me do a dab? <laughs> uh, we're going to show you guys the, this is the Motor Breath, man. This is the Motor Breath live batter here from Harmony Extracts. Got it down the road at the dispensary. Uh, without, with it not growing for flour so much anymore, uh, I was starting to run low on my supplies, so I had to go to the dispensary. Thank goodness I've been going to the same dispensary since the day they opened their doors. It was the first recreational dispensary I ever went to. And I'm still shopping there today because I like the people, I like the folks. It's good stuff. So let's get to, get into this dab. We'll start talking about some uh, germination stuff. And then we'll get into the uh, exclusive limited drop that I'm doing here on this Talk About It Tuesday. <laughs> In case you guys didn't see or didn't hear, I'm going to be dropping 20 packs, 23 packs, 20, comma, three packs of the, uh, I'm calling it vanilla slushy. It's the double berry slushy crossed with, the, with vanilla, scroops, sc vanilla scoops. Somebody just posted one, uh, literally just, that was right what I did just before I came on here. And boy, it's already looking good. It's a smaller one, but it's looking, oh shit. Uh, I know who the plant, I, knew who, I know who the, um, I know who the member of the week is. I completely bilfed, guys. I'm sorry, I'll have to go back and look for uh, the plant of the week and see who's got that. I know the member of the week for sure, um, and I will have to get on the plant of the week. I was slacking on my stuff. I'm not lie, guys. I took a big fat nap right before I um, um, right before I did my talk about it Tuesdays this this week. I was sleepy, and so I um, I was running around for the last 30 minutes trying to do all the things that I should have been doing at 8 o'clock this morning, but didn't because I'm a procrastinator. All right, let's get this dab out of the way. Y'all can watch me cough and almost die. Oh, golly, Ooh, that one got me a little dribble. Oh, God. Uh, that was fun. That was interesting. That was a big old fat dab. Kim, you might have to. Ooh wee! <coughs> I know this is why everybody really tunes in. I know it. Mike loves it. <coughs> Teresa, yes, every week. Every week I start out with a good long clearing. 
cilia exfoliating. Oh, damn. <coughs> okay, cool. All right. We get a little drink and then we'll get to talk about some germination stuff. All right. Whoo Those are always fun. I always look forward to them. Those big dabs that almost almost get me to fainting and passing out. Whoo, this is always fun. Whoo. Got one, Brenda. I'll never leave home without my due. Just a little insight about me, guys. I drink an unhealthy amount of Mountain Dews a day. It is one of my worst vices. And if anybody was ever wondering where the, uh, the Dream Beans colors and the logos came from the shirt, you don't have to worry very far. You don't have to wonder very hard. It's uh, it's Mountain Dew. I love the Dew. I do the Dew. Helps me. It's uh, it's it's plant grow fuel. Gets me up in the morning. It's good stuff. So let's get to talking about some germination stuff, guys. Uh, I've got a couple little uh, little things in here. I got set up, and uh, since we're since we're talking about germination, we're gonna tell you what we're germinating. We're going to be keeping on with the GMO project, guys. The GMO is the one, the K. So if y'all can see, uh, let's see if I can get these. Y'all can see about how many beans are in there. Let's see, I can count them. Two, four, six, eight, ten. There's 11 left. I've got 11 of the GMO 17. We have one in there. We got one in there. And we got a couple outside that are going. They're doing really, really funky, funky, sour stuff. This one, this one right here, guys. That one. This big tall one right here. Okay, guys, y'all, 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 y'all got to be ready for this. This is this thing smells like a damn. Uh, God, I know there's some Texas folks in here, but it's the, it's just because this is what I grew up eating. It's water burger, all right. Whataburger has a real good, like, just, just distinct onion that they do. It's the way they caramelize it. I don't know. It is straight up onions. Nancy Wallace, I know she knows all about that WB, that Whataburger. My boy Al, if he's watching, he knows about the WB. Uh, but, guys, it smells like a fucking Whataburger that is uh, that had been left in your car. If you've ever just not finished the last little bite, the, the, the onion, the crisp onion, the rottenly rank onion smell... That's that plant right there, guys. Every time I smell it, I think that I, I think that I'm like it just takes me back. It just takes me back to the, to the rancid water burger that I left in my car. Uh, it, it's 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 insane, guys. And I've got that one going with the uh, too much fucking grape. But as someone, I think Raymond Dawson actually just pointed out, he got one that's real funky. There's about one in about 25 that come out on that too much fucking grape. Uh, it's the it's the grape dosi or it's the. Uh, the grape slurry from Rock has a pheno that goes just so sour. It's just, it's rank. Well, that's that one. And so I'm making those, uh, I'm crossing those two, and that's what's going to become the too much fucking funk. We're going to be bringing you guys too much fucking grape and too much fucking funk. All right? If you like the grape and you like the funk, you guys are going to be impressed and super excited about what's coming down the pike from Dream Beans. We got those releases coming all summer, folks. We're going to be doing... A good amount of drops, probably seven to ten strains over the course of the summer. Um, we are, and again, these are this. I would be keeping on working with the back cross to the. Um, I've got the GMO pollen here, and so I'm going to do a back cross on this one uh, to a get some more seed stock and b uh, really try to lock in that super onion stank. I mean, it is just hey guys, it's stinky. Uh, so yeah, so we're gonna be doing uh, we're gonna be doing a little tutorial today on the um, germination method here at the Dream Farm. We always, always, always suggest these are it's too big. I'll just move it up. Root Riot cubes, <laughs> Root Riot cubes, guys. They are and you can use man. All the root plugs are the same in my opinion. Um, you know, I find them all to be about the same, really. I just use Root Riot because that's the ones that I've always used. They always seem to do good. And uh, Jason, you have to tell her. There's only eight hey, guys, and there's also the, uh, the, the 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 vanilla slushy coming down the pike. There's literally I'm I'm there's I have five beans that I'm keeping for myself in case I want to do some stuff down the line. This is just one that 
hasn't really made its way as far as the Terp profile goes to get anything that I've matched. Uh, so I'm not sure when I'm going to be continuing that line. I will be in the future, but for right now, this is going to be your only chance to ever get this. I mean, we're talking probably a couple years before this gets released as a full version or a cross of any sort. So uh, that's how you explain it to your wife. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be uh, germinating these GMOs here. Uh, they're cl courtesy of my homie Brandon that I met at the Auto Flower Cup Tac Twenty One. Uh, Growing higher is his name on um, uh, Facebook. He won every or Instagram. He won the category there, the anything but category at the Auto Flower Cup, which was basically the photo period category. And I'm telling you, it was some of the funkiest, skunkiest, damn it, but it was good. What he brought and what he won with. So I knew it was somebody that I wanted to work with. That's also the same time that I met your and my favorite bald-headed gigantor hero, Ben Koch, from Speed Run. He, uh, we all met there. That was a very, even though the event didn't turn out all super, super amazing or super crazy, uh, the connections that were made at that event have definitely changed the course of the autoflower industry for sure. Uh, with me and Ben's meeting and Brandon and I, and there were several of us that, uh, Mike from Firebuds, there was a bunch of us there that uh, really got to have a real meeting of the minds and a collective uh, conscious effort into what the autoflower industry was doing and where we wanted to see it go and how we could be the change that we wanted to see. That's what we're about, guys. We're about seeing all of those things. If anybody ever sees me out on the internet, y'all see I'm out there. I'm out there every single day and I'm fighting the good fight and I have been for a decade in trying to settle and trying to get these photo period growers to not think autos suck. That is a daily mission that I spend a majority of my time on and it's something that I've been dedicated to since the day I found out about auto flowers is having a steadfast moral conviction and an internal fortitude knowing that uh, you know auto flowers genetic potential far, is far superior to photo periods in my, in, in my opinion that the genetic benefits, the benefits that they uh, are, are allowed with the day neutral trait is, it, it's just better. So uh, you guys see me out there, I'm fighting the good fight every day. Ryan Carver, that's the guy. Hey, you guys see that guy right there, Ryan Carver? My dude, that's the member of the week. What's up? Uh, he came through with a whole bunch, man. This is how, this is, and guys, I, I, I don't, this, this is a fluid thing with the member of the week. Sometimes I'll use the top comments and stuff like this. This week, it was absolutely no doubter. It was easy because my mother-in-law is the one who came to me and told me, hey, that Ryan Carver guy, he has been making and posting some really, really funny things in the group. I knew it was in. It was a wrap. It was, it, it was, it was solid. It was sold. As soon as my mother-in-law came to me and said, hey, this member, and she pointed it out, I was already feeling that because he came through with some bangers this week, some ones that I hadn't seen, some ones that he made. Uh, Ryan Carver doing God's work out there in the Dream Factory, making folks uh, making folks' dreams come true with the memes. You're dreaming with those memes. Keep them coming, guys. Ryan Carver, you're going to get a free pack, three, three pack of pappies coming at you live and direct. Um, so, uh, again, plant of the week, guys. I'm going to have to go back and look. I completely swung and, miff, sw swung and missed because I forgot to do it. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see here. And Jimmy LZ is always is always coming through with those comments, and uh, always loving the activity there. I'm probably gonna shoot Jimmy something out as well too. Jimmy, shoot me your address. We're gonna go ahead and get you something out there too. You are by far and away just the most consistently active member. So, well, two members of the week this week. Uh, we got Jimmy and uh, Jimmy and Ryan. Jimmy and Ryan, you guys are rocking it out. So I know, God dang, that guys, if y'all couldn't tell, that dab kind of got me high. Uh, so I've just been babbling on here for about 10 minutes. So let's uh, let's get into some uh, germination stuff. What do y'all think about it? <coughs> oh, we're going to get this set up here. Yes, and this is 500 Root Riot cubes that I ordered. I was tired of paying freaking $45 at my local hydro store, so I paid uh, like 180 for 500 of them on Amazon. So we are good to go in the Root Riot department here at the Dream Farm. Always love it. They were like 22% off or something like that, so it was super awesome. Uh, so I'm going to go on ahead and see if we can't change the camera angle. Ooh. See if we can't get that to work. We'll move my dab stuff. Ah. <clears throat> uh. Okay, so... Guys, this is uh, this is this is the easy part. This is pretty simple, and I'm gonna have to bend down so you guys can see me. This is the easy part. So every time that anybody says, "Hey, what's your germ?" Uh, I didn't have it. I didn't have. 
Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Vanna Wife coming through, guys. We actually got some cool stuff. Hey, go grab those uh, holographic ones, too. Um, we got some new swag, new merch, new stuff. If you can't tell, these are magnets. We got refrigerator magnets for you guys. And we got some new holographic living the dream stickers. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. We got some new swag in, guys. You guys will be getting these in your packs. Uh, the magnets. The magnets are going to go out with these packs that I'm dropping tonight. So, you guys, not only are you going to get an exclusive limited drop of Vanilla Slushy, you're also going to get some super badass magnets, and it has my little QR code on it. So, anybody that comes over to your house and they, you show them your plants, and you're like, man, those are badass. Whoa, holy cool. Where did you get those? You just point them to the fridge. Click that QR code. Get you some drink beans. Yeah. So... Uh, back to, uh, back to doing this. So this is the easy part, guys. So whenever anybody asks me about, um, I'm going to probably do that a little bit. Um, whenever anybody asks me about germination and they say, hey, my beans didn't pop or this and this, we just had somebody in the last week, you probably, I can't remember who it was they posted. Man, it came up after a week. Sowing in dirt, one of the things that I don't like about it, it's not to say it's not an effective method and it can't work. It's how nature's done it for years and years and eons and eons and decades and decades. It is to say that I've seen it. I've, I've seen them not be as. I've seen it not be as effective, for whatever reason. Be it that down in that dirt, it's not as uh, warm and doesn't, uh, you know, facilitate the optimal environment, or little critters and bugs get on it, or mold, or whatever the case may be. And a lot of times, I've seen them get lost. Guys, I had a plant pop up 45 days after I planted it. When I went down there and dug it up because my all, I couldn't. I, I was just it wouldn't work, and so I just kind of wanted to see. So what I what I did was. As I started digging it up a little bit, kind of like an archaeologist, and I was digging, and I was digging. You know what it was? What ended up happening? The seed had gotten turned upside down. Something had happened, and it had started growing downwards. Well, then it figured out that it wasn't supposed to be growing that way for whatever reason, and started to grow up. But when it grew up, it started to grow at an angle. Guys, this thing had a freaking tap root like this long on it. Okay, it was it, it was crazy. And so what these root riot cubes do is they force this plant to go in the right direction. It keeps it in optimal humidity, and optimal temperature is going to be the key, guys. Okay? So, without further ado, I know you guys are probably, probably sitting and waiting in anticipation. Uh, not really. So, guys, this is, it's, this, y'all saw me open this bag, right? You saw me open the bag. They go straight out of the bag. Sometimes, depending on how you, they're stored, guys, they might have a little bit of green mold on it. A little green slime. Wash it off, it's fine. I've used these things... I've reused these things. I, I, I should take stock in this damn company because I've used so many of them and I turned so many people on to this method of germination. So, as you can see, I'm just taking them straight out of the bag and putting them straight into straight into the straight into the seedling tray. I prefer and I like these ones, guys, because they're clear. <laughs> So you can check on your root development as it's going. You can just go boop and see if their see if their roots are popping. Uh, I definitely have enjoyed these clear seedling trays, and I use that feature quite a bit. Um, so let's see if I got something to poke with. That'd be cool. Uh, generally, hang hang up. Yeah, let me see if Vanna wife can help. Hey, babe, can you get me a Q-tip? Yeah. I uh. Of course, I'm never prepared. I'm I am a pillar of preparedness, folks. Uh, but while she's doing that, okay. All right, handy dandy Q-tips. So this is this. I mean, this is real simple, guys. Each of these, if you can see, they come with a pre-drilled hole. It's very convenient. So the way that I do it is, I take it. And you put one seed on top of one little hole. Just like this. And we only had 11 beans. So, hey, get off there. We are going to only have 11 in here for demonstration purposes. Okay? So, then you take your Q-tip or a pencil eraser or anything, really. Okay? And what you want to do is, you guys, the, the using a Q-tip is cool because if you put it down to where the stick starts, the cotton stops, 
that's about how far you want to do it, okay? Let's see if we can get that bubble. Ah. Okay, so you want to take this, stick that stick down to where it's just cotton, and do that on every one of them. Okay. Make sure it go. Make sure the seed, of course, go oh, good. Guys, I'll, I'll get my camera skills down someday. Okay, there we go. Boop, diggity boop. And sometimes it'll get stuff on it, so you flip it over to the other end. Like that. Stick it down in there. Then you might get a little bit of the cotton that comes off. That's okay. No big deal. Boom. Stick it down in there. Boom. Stick it down in there. So now, you've got all the seeds are down there in the hole. Let's see if we can see. I mean, you guys saw how far I put it down there. Okay. Put your seed, your, your lid on there, and this has an airflow thing at the top. Yeah, it's more for like clones and stuff. You want to have it all the way closed up to where those holes right there are all covered up. And so what that's going to do is the moisture inside those uh, root riot cubes in the sealed environment is going to provide relatively, it's going to pr provide 99 to 100% humidity, okay? That's what you want. You want it as damp as it can get without raining, all right? That's the main, that's the main thing as far as how wet you want it. You don't have to dunk these guys. I see people doing all kinds of crazy stuff. They dunk them in, soak them in pH water with, with uh, acid or, uh, you know, vinegar or baking soda or pH. You know, and, and take them out of the bag, shove the steed in there. I have a 99% germination rate with this method. Now, the key once you've done this and the, 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 the best way to get your seeds to pop, folks, and this is not just for dream beans, this is for any bean when it comes to cannabis, okay, is to keep your temperatures between 78 and 83 degrees steady, okay? You don't want it to dip below that. You don't want it to go over that. You want to keep it in that range. And there's a few ways you can do that. You can do it with a heat mat, like a heat heating pad. Uh, I don't have one in here, but it's like, a, it's just a heating mat. Uh, you can get them, the, get the ones that are adjustable. Um, so you can keep it exactly at 80 degrees. That's going to be your perfect temperature. If you have anything that you can set the temperature to, I would set it at 80 degrees because most things have a limiter switch and it'll, once it drops down below a certain, a two degree variance or whatever, it'll drop it down. So it'll keep it within about a four degree range. Okay. And that's going to be like your heaters and space heaters and stuff like that. Okay. And so a lot of people put these on top of their computers and, you know, you can put it on a PlayStation or uh, any of that kind of stuff. All right. Um, that you, uh, you can do, uh, and yeah, Dave, that's a great idea. Uh, I may, uh, post them when they pop, uh, or we'll just check on them, uh, next t t talk about it Tuesday. This is probably what I'll do. Uh, so yeah. So keeping the temperature steady, guys, a lot of people ask me, do they need light? The only thing they need light for at that stage is to tell the little seedling where to go. All right. Uh, I learned that in mycology that, uh, that when I was growing a lot of mushrooms that, the uh, mushrooms are very, very, they don't care about photo period, really. They don't care about light. They are not light-driven things. They can grow in complete darkness. They are not photoreactive at all. So, um, in, in a lot of cases, the, the ones that I'm talking about, the ones that I grew anyway. Uh, and so, we, you, but you want to have a light in there because <coughs> everything on this planet has uh, developed a circadian rhythm in a thing, in a way that they that their organism bases their life and how it does its life things on the sun and the moon. When is the sun up? When is the sun down? When is the moon up? When is the moon down? That we have all evolved because it's been a steady constant for seven billion years or whatever. Uh, so uh, the light is, you know, you don't need very much light. Okay. This is just, again, just something to, to tell them where to go. Because uh, for a long time, man, and it still happens every time, people say, oh, I thought you had to germinate seeds in darkness. I mean, no, you don't. <laughs> it's dark down in that root plug, yeah. But outside of that, in the actual environment, no, it does not need to be complete dark. In fact, you need to have a little bit of light to tell that little seedling where to go. If you do it in complete darkness, if you've ever done it, it's really crazy. You'll come out, and these things will grow. I mean, boy, they are searching for any kind of light. Those little, those little uh, baby seedlings, they look like tendrils. They're cra It's crazy. Um, so, yeah, you've got to uh, make sure that you keep that temperature between 78 and 83 degrees, guys, steady for three to five days. 
the majority, 95% of seeds will pop in that time frame, given those parameters, all right? And uh, how long do I keep them in there till I transplant? And guys, you know I have bad ADHD, so if I see a comment and it seems pertinent and relevant, I will comment like right now. How long do I leave them in there? Uh, I leave them in there until as soon as I see them pop up. A lot of, sometimes if I've got 12 in a tray and I've got 10 of them that are like this, and then I've got, then they've got two that are what I call a gooseneck. Gooseneck is just that first little piece of the stem that comes up before it actually uh, goes, goes all the way up. And so if I see gooseneck sticking out, I'll transplant them. What that does is it, uh, I try to, I always try, and it's always better for me if a taproot has not come out of the bottom of the, um, out of the root rat cube. <clears throat> because again, when you're transplanting, when you're taking these out, take extra care, super care, all the care in the world of that taproot and make sure that you don't break it. If you break that taproot, it will root, it'll, it'll snap the root crown, uh, the, the, the root cap off and the root cap is what tells the plant all its pertinent information and all its important stuff. So when you use this method, make sure that when you are transplanting, take extra care and don't just take it out and be real rough with it. Be real gentle. Take it and give that taproot a nice little, little soft, little pillowy, nice little good air. Don't jam it all the way down into the hole, okay? You want to leave a little bit of air space. So that's a, that's a good thing. I'm glad, somebody, I'm glad you asked that. So whenever you get the hole and you get, the, you, you get your dirt and then you put your hole down in there, you make your hole. Make your hole a little bit deeper than the plug. You always want to make it just a little bit deeper. Again, guys, cannabis loves almost above all else air to its roots, okay? Giving that little bitty gap between the, you know, in the hole and not having it sit on the bottom allows a nice humid environment. It's not going to be saturated. It's going to have oxygen and it's going to be right where that root crown thrives. The root crown is where the big mare stem, the main stem comes, comes down and turns into a root if you ever pulled up a plant. And you'll see right there is a transition zone. That's what's called the root crown. And so what I've found is by providing that little air space uh, between the bottom of the root riot cube and the soil, it allows that it allows that root crown to get really, really big and really, really sturdy, and provide a good steady base for the uh, uh, for the plant to survive and thrive. Okay, so you guys make sure um, that you keep your uh, you, uh, you're gonna hear me say it probably ten more times. Keep your temperature steady. Your temperature steady. The the seedling method, the seedling tray method, this method right here. This is going to keep your humidity exactly where you need it to be, where you, it's, it's impossible to mess the humidity up on this one. You take the, the root riot cubes out of the bag, put them in here, and put the top on, you will get 99 to 100% humidity. It's exactly where you need to be. All right? So you want to make sure that you uh, uh, keep your t temperature steady. Guys, uh, for anybody out there still using old school stuff, I don't know if you can see that. That's my uh, that's my HPS ballast. That's my old school uh, magnetic HPS ballast that I have running in this room because it gets a little cold. So I use that for heat. Uh, you can use one of those uh, if you're going to use anything other than a temperature controlled ability to control the heat mat. Uh, if you use anything other than a controllable heat mat, I would say get a laser thermometer. You can get them for fairly cheap. You can get them twenty or thirty bucks. Some of them you know on Amazon you can get them for ten bucks. Just a little laser thermometer that'll give you an idea of what the surface temperature is of whatever you're putting it on. So if you can find something that stays steady between 78 and 83 degrees, rock it out, more power to you, okay? Uh, do I pre-wet the soil before you pop your root plug in the pot? Yeah, definitely. Because that root is that root, uh, root riot plug is a sponge, essentially, if you put the root riot cube in there and there is uh, no water around it, it'll suck all the water out of that cube and your plant will die. So you want to fill, before you put the root riot cube in there, you want to fill that hole up all the way with water. It's going to make a little bit of mud. It'll settle back down to get real soupy. Dig down a little bit because it will have settled. Make that hole a little bit longer than your uh, root riot cube and rock it out. Um, so yeah, that's it, you know, but again, the main thing is, the, the main thing with getting seeds to pop and germinate is going to be keeping them at a stable temperature. I have written an article. I've got an article written for you guys that don't know. I've shared it with a lot of folks. It's my how to germinate your autoflower, germinating your, 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 the best way to germinate your beans uh, for multiverse beans uh, on the blog. I've written a bunch of articles there, guys. If you haven't checked that out, it's super awesome. Basically, a lot of these videos are really kind of just a video form of the articles that I've written. 
Uh, I get a lot of the same questions, and we've been getting them for a long time. A lot of the problems that most growers have, and especially dealing with auto flowers, is the same. Most folks have the exact same problems, and once you can identify those, uh, you know, small and subtle differences, that the, the small nuances of how autos are different to photos, or just if you're starting out to grow, then it's a, uh, you know, it's a real way to, uh, you know, be able to build your skill set and all that good stuff. So. Uh, let's talk about this vanilla slushy. Y'all guys want to hear about some vanilla slushy action? I figured you do. <laughs> let me, uh, let me pause for station identification. This, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, this Talk About It Tuesday is brought to you by DreamBeans.com, DRB. We're the ones that you're listening to in the morning, getting you to work. Not really, it's in the afternoon. Most of y'all are probably coming home from work. I'd have the afternoon show if I was a radio disc jockey. Ah, let's see here. Let's do another little dab. I'm not going to do a big dab. You won't have to uh, hear me go crazy. Um, but then we'll start talking about some vanilla vanilla slushy. Uh, vanilla slushy is awesome. It's going to be good. I can't... Uh, uh, Dave Forkner, Forkner, Forker, Forkner, Forker, he was who posted that the Doubleberry slushy. Uh, I think Nick Loner's got one. Lorner's got one. All right. Yeah. <coughs> uh, Nick Lorner's got one. Uh, there's a couple of. There's a. I sent these out. <coughs> I want to say with my first <coughs> talk about it, dude. I don't remember when I sent them out, but <coughs> I sent out like ten or fifteen of the ten or fifteen <coughs> packs of these to people. And they're growing them out, and they're all looking amazing. The ones that I've grown out, this is one of the one on this guy is that you're going to really notice is the fat bottom girls. The the Mara stem on some of these things, I wish I had to take pictures. I mean, they're they're that big. It uh, it's you know it's seventy days. They're huge. They get gigantic. They yield extremely heavy. They get super super heavy. Okay, put them in a big pot. Watch them go. I'd say seven or above, seven or ten gallon pot. And watch these things explode. Um, they're going to give you a very vanilla, vanilla, it's like a, a vanilla berry cream, okay? Uh, I'm real into watching these, um, uh, me and my wife, Vanna Wife, shout out to Vanna Wife. Uh, we're into watching some cooking shows every now and again. Top Chef, Cook All Stars, All Star Competition, Chef, Chefs of America, there's all, uh, several of them. But man, they do a real good job of taking crap I've never heard of and making it sound real good. And so when I say, when I say vanilla berry cream... That's like one of these uh, fancy dessert things that these guys make. It's a, a pom phrase of a of a vanilla berry cream. And then the judges eat it, and it's amazing. It's got a very, very... Uh, hey, they're, 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 they're not there yet. They shouldn't be available yet. Uh, Dan, I don't think... They're not available yet. They will be available at the end of this live. I will make them available. Uh, they, uh, yeah, creme brulee, exactly, yeah, like a creme brulee, a fa fa floopity floop. Any of the friends, fans out there, the show Friends, there's an episode where Joey tries to learn Italian and he says, floopity 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 floop. Floopity floop. Floopity French. Or he says, he's learning French, not Italian. Uh, French. And he says, floopity floop, floop, floop. That's what I think about whenever I hear all those, uh, fancy cooking terms. The um, the um, and the fish, fish, fish. Um, all those things. So that's what this is going to be. It's a very, very almost a cereal milk type of uh, creamy pie or something. It's sweet notes. This one's going to be a lot sweeter leaning with the double berry. It got the more berry side of the double berry slushy. That's the one. See, this is kind of the one of the ways that this one split that I didn't really take this vino and use it in the double berry slushy because it wasn't funky enough. But I knew it had a high enough terpene content and high enough uh, uh, stuff in there that I really wanted to use it at some point in time. Uh, so when I when I did the vanilla scoops, I was just so impressed with how thick the stem got and how vanilla cream. I mean, if you just took a uh, old whippet canister and put some vanilla extract and some you know some cream, heavy cream in there, and charge that son of a gun up and you know put some uh, blueberries and raspberries and boysenberries in there. Uh, basically, the whole IHOP syrup lineup, if you took all those and put them in there with it and shook it up, that's what it smells like. It's very, very creamy, very smooth, velvety. It's, it's, it's a velvety smell. I don't know how to describe it, really. 
Uh, but it's you guys know what I'm talking about. It's real smooth. It just uh, hits your olfactories real good. Um, oh, did guys? Uh oh. <laughs> did I? Are those live? They weren't supposed to be live till after. Oops. Okay. Well, I'm guessing they are live now and quite possibly could be sold out. Ah. Oops. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well. Guys, go over there and get them now. We'll go ahead and end this live, and hopefully they are not all the way done. Make sure you click the package size. We will go ahead and let you guys get there, and I will make a post. It seems as though most people have got their packs. Um, shit. That wasn't what was supposed to be how it goes because I clicked the wrong button because, again, I was taking a nap today, guys. Crap. Um, okay, well, hey, they're out there. They are, they're, they're, they're available, I think, uh, maybe possibly sold out. Oh, probably not. Again, there was only 20 packs, guys. They were going to go really, really fast, no matter how uh, how much. Uh, yeah, I was doing the dab, man, and, and y'all went and snagged them. So, nap for the win. Sorry, guys. I, I, I guess they were they were there, and, uh, yeah, that was yeah, my bad. But uh, so for those of you who got them, you're going to love them. Uh, we will go ahead and uh, I need to go find out what the hell I did and what button I didn't push. Um, dreambeans.net, that's where you can get them, uh, or could get them. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, let's see, guys, there's also, I tell you what, um, for those of you that didn't, uh, weren't able to get these, I've got one coming next week that's super fire, too, uh, it's gonna be a, uh, uh, the, uh, large glue pheno of the Doubleberry Slushy. I'm gonna release that one, uh, cause I've got a bunch of those, and, uh, so we'll get you guys some of those, we'll, we'll, allow you guys opportunity to get some uh, some some more really unreleased stuff uh but uh yeah so love you guys you guys are fantastic and phenomenal we will get out of here i've got a baseball game to watch and um gary my satina sativa leaning strain is going to be your double berry slushy uh if you want to go on the go on the site check that out you guys don't forget to get your build your own multi-packs at dreambeans.net and i have to go check the site and see what the hell i did and how it was uh able for y'all to go ahead and sneak in and get those packs Later, guys. We love y'all. We will see y'all out there at the Dream Factory and in the multiverse. Woohoo!